Hi guys, do you remember last week when I came up to Lake Buffalo fishing for redfin and I caught each a little weeny redfin? I must have caught 30 of them on soft plastics. I had so much fun. Well, today I've come back to Lake Buffalo to fish for these redfin again, but this time I've changed it up a little bit. I've ditched the spinning reel and I've gone for the fly rod. Hey folks, Lake Buffalo, I love this place. Last week, as you may have seen, I caught a stack of small redfin up here using a little, little strike tiger, 1.5 inch curl tail grub. I had a blast. Today I've decided to get the fly rod out and do a bit of fly fishing. I have caught redfin on fly in the past. It's not something new, but it's not something that I've done a lot of. And I just wanted to challenge myself and see how I go. I'm using my four weight Wildfish Cascade series rod. The four weight won't cast as far as I'd like it to, but I think it'll be far enough given that it's not a really deep sort of edge around the lake. Now, I'm using a long leader. I'm using a Maxima Ultra Green leader, and it's about seven or eight foot long. And the reason I've, I've made such a long leader is because the fly line on this rod is Cortland 444 five weight forward weighted floating line now because it's floating line it's going to be hard for this little fly once it gets wet to pull the line down and get any any kind of depth i think once this fly is wet and a little bit heavy they should be able to pull the monofilament line down a much easier than it will pull the floating fly line down so by having a longer leader it might just help that get down to that little bit deeper i'm not sure what kind of fly it is it's some kind of streamer fly it's green and white with a gold head once it's wet and I strip it through the water, it should just look like a little minnow darting along. Let's go and see if I can catch some redfin on the fly rod. Go little four weight. Get that line right out there. Yeah, baby. That's uh, more than long enough. stripping the line through see this and what that's going to be doing is just making my minnow swim I reckon if anyone drives past now and sees me casting this fly rod they're going to assume that I'm fishing for trout Oh, something like that one again. Take it. Something hit it just out there. It's a definite take. As Vincent Donnelly would say, it was a definite tug. Got him. <laughs> there we go. Red fin on fly. <laughs> like a photo of him, he's got a crooked tail. Like a photo of you, mate. The old redfin are much easier to photograph than what trout are. They actually sit still. That first redfin on the fly rod today. Caught one of these. Oh, caught one of these like this last week with these bent tails. Bit of a mystery as to why that happens. Got him. <laughs> I'm not going to fight over this one as well because he's a bit more, uh, his tail's not as twisted. <laughs> I'm having a blast and that's what it's all about, having a blast. See ya mate. You can see that that fly is coming through the water and it just looks like that, like a little minnow going doop, 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 doop. And the redfin are liking it.
Got him. <laughs> it's taken me a while to get the third one. They've been a lot slower than when I was here last week. I've picked up two. This is number three, and this is the biggest one. Just. Oh, he's got a bit of weed on him. That's why he feels a bit bigger. But he still is a little bit bigger. Well, here we go. Red fin number three on the fly. <laughs> Love it. It's taken me a while. I've been here a good bloody hour and a half, I suppose. I've got two. I know fly fishing is a lot harder than conventional spinning or soft plastic fishing, but I still would have thought I would have picked up more than that based on the, uh, the success I had here last week. So, anyway, who knows, I might hit a school now and catch about 50. You just never know, do you? <laughs> I know I'm getting this fly back out there as quick as I can, just in case there is a school out there. Got him. <laughs> He's a little weeny one, this one. He's not going to take me down to the backing, I can tell you. Have a look at the size of this little tiddler. <laughs> wow. Oops, off he goes. I was going to uh, hold him up and show the camera, but he had other ideas. I just untangled into my line. Tangling, when you're fly fishing, tangling just sort of comes with the territory. There's always a a line tangle of some description going on. Just want to get that back out there as quick as I can, just in case there's a school of them out there. Got him. <laughs> hey, wow, look at the size of him. I reckon I've seen sardines in a tin that are bigger than that fish. <laughs> I wonder if I was to break this fish's neck, just throw it over there, if one of these birds would come and get it. I'll just leave it on the water there and see if anything comes. I don't think those birds want the seagulls might. Those pelicans over there certainly would love it. So too would a sea eagle if there's one around. I reckon something will come and grab that at some stage. It might, might be 20 minutes or half an hour, but eventually something's going to come and grab that redfin off the water. Got him. One thing about this sort of fishing, you don't feel the take very well because the line is so heavy. Because the fly line itself is so heavy, you don't, it's not a real pronounced bite. You just, gen, you just feel like a real little tug. Look at that, short and fat. It's like a football shape, but only about a tenth of the size. He's got that little issue with his tail, the same as that other one before. Someone told me that they heard that's from inbreeding. I don't know, you know lots of people inbreed, you don't see them with crooked tails. I'm not sure what causes that, some people say it's Something to do with their stunting, some people say it's to do with overeating, some say it's from inbreeding, some say it's from going through weir gates, which that can't be the case because there's no weir gates upstream of here. There's the only weir gates here at the bottom end of this lake and once a fish goes down that it's not coming back up. So that rules that out. So I'm not really sure what causes that little curl in the tail. But I caught one like it here last week and I've caught two like it here today. The mystery of the twisted tail redfin. Oh yeah. Look at this bird up here in the sky. I bet anything he finds that little redfin that I killed and put on the water before. I bet anything that hawk or whatever it is, the redfin's just over there somewhere. He's circling. He's seen it, I reckon. He's looking at it.
you guys, look, he's coming down on it. Look, he's gonna get it. Bang, he just got me a little red fin. See that? You can see it in his talons. He's flying off with my little red fin in his feet, in his talons. Didn't I tell you, within 10 or 20 minutes, something would come and grab that red fin. <laughs> the, the pleasure is all mine, mate. <laughs> Love it. Got him. <laughs> this one might be a little bit bigger if I'm lucky. Oh yeah, biggest one today. <laughs> Still no monster. Might take him over the grass here and just get a photo of the red fin laying on the grass next to my fly rod. I reckon that'd be a really cool photo. <sighs> there he goes. See you later, Mr. Redfin. He's off. Off like a bride's nighty. Oh, I missed him. Had a take, had a tug. Oh, yeah, you missed him again. Get that fly back out there, boy. Ah, stupid cast. We didn't got it. That could be in a similar sort of zone. I just had two tugs. I missed them both. Come on, tug again. Tug some more. Give me a tug. Nobody. Yes, got him. Just about to lift it out and the fish grabbed it. Oh, no. High stick that I've given it slack. Is it still even there? Yep. <laughs> yeah, baby. There he is. A lovely little tugger that tugged me so many times. You tugged on my fly, mate, and you uh, ended up in my face. But luckily for you, I'm a gentleman and I'm going to put you back in the water. <laughs> Oh, just a little one. Jeez. I am having a blast. Fly fishing for redfin. Give it a crack. It's great fun. Got him. GoPro battery hasn't got much life left in it. Hopefully I'll land this fish before it goes flat. Here he comes. Another little lake buffalo redfin. How could he? Well that's the end of that then isn't it? <laughs> Sorry folks, battery went flat halfway through landing that last fish. I have had a wonderful time fly fishing. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. I just want to give you a couple of quick tips based on what I learned today, fly fishing for redfin in a lake. My rod isn't ideal, it's not the right rod for the setup, but it's the rod that I've got. I've got a Wildfish 4 weight series, or 4 weight, sorry, Cascade series, 7 foot 6 in length. That's quite short for fly rod, for a fly rod. And the reason I like a short fly rod is, as you guys know, a lot of the streams that I fish are quite small and overgrown, and 7 foot 6 is ideal in the smaller streams. But in the lake here, it's a problem. I needed a longer rod because what I found as I was wading in the water, as soon as I got up towards my waist, I really struggled to cast. I couldn't lift my rod high enough. I was casting like this at times to try and keep my rod tip up because on my back cast, as soon as I started getting a decent length of line out, the water kept the, the line, the fly kept hitting the water behind me, slowing it down and stuffing up the cast. So I would suggest if you want to go fly fishing for redfin in a lake and you've already got a fly rod, use that. At least start with that until you decide whether you want to get right into it or not. If you're new to fly fishing in lakes and you want to go out and buy an outfit specifically for this, I would recommend two things. A longer rod, I'd be going for a nine foot rod so that when you wade out into the water, you've still got a fair bit of ground clearance to help you get longer casts. So a longer rod and a sinking line. By using a floating line, even with the longer, the longer maxima leader, it was hard to get my fly down. And I think most of the time, my fly was only just under the surface and I think that most of the redfin that I caught were only four or five inches under the surface. If I was going out now to look at a rod specifically for this type of fishing, I'd look at probably a three weight. If I couldn't get a three weight long enough, I'd go to a four weight. But I'd look at probably a three weight nine foot rod or a four weight nine foot rod. 
I've got a longer rod. It's an eight. That's a six weight that I use for. Sorry, an eight weight that I use for Murray cod. The problem is, even with this four weight, those little red fin, when they hit the fly, you can barely feel it through this this fly line. Heavier line would make it even harder to detect the bites, which is why I would probably go down to a three weight as long as I could keep the length. To look for a three or four weight, try and get a longer rod, eight foot six, nine foot, longer the better with a sinking line to help you get your fly down deep. And I think you'll catch a lot more fish than I did today. But with the floating line, the seven foot six four weight, I've had a wonderful time all on this one little fly. I don't even know what the name of this fly is. I just, you just strip it through the water and it looks like a little minnow and the redfin loved it. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, why not consider doing so? Check me out on Patreon. I'll see you in the next video.